This is a, a rather unusual presentation in that um, it's been actually, uh, because I've been busy with my presentation, Vance and Ingrid, you must realize I work in England. The one, one of my colleagues, Vance, works in Indiana in the United States, and Ingrid is down in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. So it's um, rather difficult to get together for meetings and prepare things. And while I've been preparing my talk, they've been preparing this talk. Um, I just received the finished slides for it uh, 23 minutes ago. Um, and I've just printed out the talk about two minutes ago. So um, basically, uh, I think Peter gave, us, gave you a, a wonderful introduction. Um, the original motivation was to try and use video to uh, deal with the teacher shortage in South Africa. Uh, we've had some success. We've had lots of frustration as well. But I will give you a little more about that. Um, we won the um, coffee concept in 2011 at Dublin. Um, and the idea, as I said, was to use audiovisual content to improve education. Um, a few things, oh, this is going to give me feedback again, isn't it? I'll try and talk a little more quietly. Um, KwaZulu-Natal is the most remote part of South Africa. Uh, the effect of AIDS in South Africa is uh, pretty um, hard to comprehend, I think, in this day and age. Um, the, the simplest statistic, which we've used before, you may have heard us say this or not, but basically teachers in South Africa are dying of AIDS faster than they can be trained, to give you some sense of how bad the situation is. Um, we uh, started a, a pilot project uh, using a device that someone else has come up with called a knowledge box, which I will show you a bit about in a minute. It's essentially a, a computer built into a kiosk with a touch screen, which allows you to access materials, uh, written and uh, audiovisual materials, various digital stuff. Um, we did a brief progress report last year and showed a bit of a video. Uh, and very, very kindly, Peter uh, adopted us as a project. Um, and as I said, we've been trying to move forward from there with uh, much frustration, as you shall see. But uh, initially, the knowledge box was installed in a secondary school. Um, there were some problems that ended up being connected with that, and it has since been moved to a library, which has actually uh, been a very positive thing, because um, the library is actually accessed by a far larger number of students than having it in a single school is concerned, uh, would be. Um, I'm, trying, I'm just trying to compare this with this. Um, here we are. This is the, um, this is the Bulwer Library, uh, where it's located. You can see it's, uh, well, that's a, a nice mural that's been put up outside. A library is pretty much looks like a library. Um, and this is uh, an example of the sort of area that we're dealing with. Um, the, uh, okay, I'm, this is, some of this is there, some of it isn't. I'm sorry, I'm going to be going back and forth a little bit. I'm not quite sure how much of this translates to the slides. Um, because it's sort of a resource poor environment, there are many, many challenges. Uh, hopefully, if nothing else, we can sort of provide a, a, a road map. Uh, even depending on how much we can do, at least we're identifying a lot of the problems connected with trying to do anything. Um, one of the big problems we've been dealing with has been distance. Uh, as I said, we're dealing with uh, three people working on three different continents. Um, more importantly than that, uh, the um, uh, connectedness uh, on the internet of South Africa, particularly KwaZulu-Natal, is, is very bad. Um, we've had great, great problems trying to contact Ingrid for meetings. Um, when she is around, when she's not, it's very hard uh, getting her at all. She goes off, 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 um, off mic for a while, for long periods of time. Um, the uh, okay, here we are. This is a, a moving on to a demo of the knowledge box. I'm not sure why the images. Uh, squished like that. But the box on the left is the knowledge box. As you can see, it's just a fairly straightforward kiosk with a touch screen, various rows of buttons. 
Um, there is a little video which I think will work, which will give you a sense of how you would use it. You put it in there? You can take it home. Yeah. So everything's there, all the episodes. <laughs> Give you give you a sense of how the how the box works anyway. Um, the uh, okay. Yeah. All right. As I said, the connectedness is a is a big problem. Um, it's also uh, ties in with the whole fact that we wanted to do some work in this area to try and see about getting resources out to the schools. Um, the um, uh, we did do a survey of users of the Knowledge Box. Doc started by asking about their cell phone usage, internet, and computer usage, and left some open answers for ways to improve the project. We got responses from school learners and from university students, but the answers to the questionnaires were frequently not terribly relevant to what we were trying to find out. It, and we think, this, this is gonna sound silly, but we think it might have had to do with the fact that the, the questionnaires were initially written in English. And although English is widely spoken, we think people may have been more comfortable with your responding if it had been translated into, is it, actually you could help me, Stephen, is it Isis Zulu, Isis Zulu? Isis Zulu, Isis Zulu. Um, in our study, though, we did find that about half the respondents had some sort of a mobile device that can access the internet, usually used for social media. Particularly, there's a, a chat service in South Africa called Mixit, I believe. That sound right? Mixit, which has very low cost message uh, messaging. Um, We found, perhaps most importantly, that in order to have something like this work, we need to have some sort of a champion on site. It's not sufficient to simply leave the box there and hope that wonderful things will happen. Um, we did find one of these uh, at the library. Um, unfortunately, that person left uh, for monetary reasons. We suddenly didn't have a champion anymore. Um, the um, where are we here? Sorry about this again. Um, we basically found we're still in that situation. We need someone who can sort of manage the box locally. Um, what researchers think is important, I'm not really quite sure what that sentence means. I'm sorry about this. Um, this is a little different from what it says here. Um, the, um, we do feel we need people in, the, in this space. Um, actually, we were talking earlier, uh, uh, talking to someone recently about Sugata Mitra's uh, work in India with the hole in the wall stuff. Um, it, it's an interesting kind of comparison, actually, because I think he was able to simply leave his box in a village in India and some pretty amazing things happened with it. Um, we haven't found the same thing with this. It may be that this isn't complete internet access because it's dealing with a fixed set of resources, which perhaps somehow makes it less, um, less attractive, possibly. Um, we, uh, it's very easy, one mistake we're aware that, that we uh, have done is that it, I think it's easy for us to sort of see what we think is necessary, what is needed, what resources are useful. And we thought along these lines. We did an analysis of the South African curriculum and tried to find videos that worked with it and linked to them. And that all made logical sense to us. Uh, but in fact, what we found is, despite all of that, the biggest demand that there's been was actually for tests. People wanted access to tests that they could uh, try out their skills on. Um, this may be due to the fact, again, that there wasn't a champion promoting use of the resources as they are, and people stuck with what they were familiar with, which was testing. Um, another very unusual result that we couldn't have anticipated that's had a great effect on us, uh, on our work, has been the fact that there is a paper shortage in KwaZulu-Natal. Um, and 
The reason you think digital media, paper, so what? Well, we found that when we um, printed out and distributed questionnaires that had a questionnaire on one side of the page, the back of the page, of course, was blank. So rather than fill out the questionnaires, people would keep them so that they, they could use the backs of the questionnaires to do work on. Um, now there's a, a surprising result. Um, as a result, uh, we found less than 12% of the questionnaires that we sent out were actually, were actually returned to us. Um, so uh, strangely, uh, when you're dealing with digital media, we find that actually the, the, uh, the shortage of paper becomes a, a central issue when dealing with electronic media, at least for us. For us, it certainly did. Um, the, um, where are we? Um, oh yeah, the, uh, the idea of paper right, which is a, uh, a rights management mechanism that, uh, as I understand it, you pay a license fee and then you can proceed to print out paper copies. We think that may provide a, a route to try and Im improve situations a little more, but it's, it's um, a bit of a, an open question at this point. Um, I think that pretty much says an awful lot about what's motivating us to keep trying to do this. Just some shots. This is very close to the library, I believe. Interestingly, for all of the difficulty in getting resources and dealing with the internet, if you wanted to see the library, it's, it's on Google Street View. Um, very strange bit of, bit of confusion there. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, we do want to keep moving forward with this project. Uh, it's been quite frustrating at times doing things, but we do feel like it's worthwhile attempting to pursue it. If for no other reason than um, where we um, fall into potholes, we can possibly leave signs behind us for the next people that, that try to do this. Um, I think another problem that's faced us all is that we're all doing this on our own time. None of us have institutional support. In the case of Ingrid, it's a bit of a gray area. She sort of manages to make it work within her job, but I think it's on an informal basis. And certainly for Vance and me, it's just something, something we do in our, in our spare time, such as it is. Um, but we do feel that it's worthwhile. We'd love to have been able to uh, report more at this point, but at least you get a sense of, uh, of some things that are happening with it. Um, I'm not going to read this out. You guys can read. So that's pretty inspiring. I feel inspired by it. I hope you do too. I'm sorry, what does PMB stand for? PMB? I'm not sure. Do you know? Uh, Peter Maritzburg. Peter Maritzburg. Yeah, it's the second largest pharmaceutical in the world. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Stephen. All right. Um, I think that's uh, pretty much all I can say about it at this point. I'd be happy to attempt to answer questions you have uh, about the project. Okay. Well, uh, chairing gives me the advantage that I can uh, do the first question. Yeah. <laughs> um, how will you go on after this? Um, you well, how do you find funding? How do you carry on? That's been, that's been a big problem. One, uh, again, surprisingly complicated problem we've been having is that in order to accept funding, we have to have some sort of legal entity. And there are a lot of, uh, a lot of complications in trying to make that happen. We've investigated various avenues. 
nothing seems to have um, uh, made sufficient sense to pursue. Um, we've even talked about just, you know, getting a PayPal account and just saying, just stick some money in and we won't tell anybody, which we may yet do, actually. Um, it, it's, it's one of, it has its problems associated with it, but it might be the simplest way to get things going. Um, certainly, with or without money, we're, we're trying to do some things. We would like to be able to do more. Um, and I think at this point, all I can say is that we're, we're going to keep pursuing the money path. We're going to pursue a couple of other paths. And hopefully, between them, we'll find some sort of a, a way to trudge forward. Okay, so we may have an update next year. I hope so. I okay. hope so. And I hope I, I can say more things. I mean, there's been some positive stuff that's come out of this, but hopefully there'll be even more positive stuff next year. And maybe we run into people uh, who know where to get funded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, please? Remarks? Hi, thanks. Um, I was wondering if you could say more about the content of the videos and how the teachers responded to that. And I'm reminded of a Microsoft research project that was looking at peer-to-peer -peer video distribution where they got sort of teachers to video themselves. And then the concept was that people learned more from teachers that were a little bit better than they were rather than vastly better or in a very different context. I just wondered how that played out. We you know we we haven't got as far as having teachers making videos. We've been trying to keep it as low tech and simple as possible. And what we've been doing is looking at existing video resources that we can find. Um, I mean, Khan Academy is an example. Um, Vance has access to some video materials through the School of Education at University of Illinois that he's been looking at incorporating. Um, there's a whole other issue about creating content, which we just felt was, was too much for us to deal with at this point. And we're purely trying to look at the, shall we say, the distribution issues at this point. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Steve. Right. And, okay. Uh, thank you. I'll get this out of your way. <laughs>